The Vision High School Sports Beat, brought to you by the 11 locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, offering Buick GMC, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram, Hyundai, Kia, and Nissan, and the resale division. With locations in Webster, Henrietta, Penfield, Fairport, Canandaigua, Ontario, and Palmyra, and online at visionauto.com. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us at the special edition of the Vision High School Sports Beat as we look back at some of our favorite stories from the winter sports season. I'm Bill Pucko. We begin as we always do with our honor roll of high school teams brought to you by Salino and Barnes. The honor roll of high school teams is brought to you by Salino and Barnes. Salino and Barnes, injury attorneys, call 888 Don't wait, call or text 8. Here's our on-roll of high school teams for the season just completed. At number three, Pittsburgh Boys Swimming. The Panthers are somewhat taken for granted, but 14 straight sectional titles is quite an accomplishment, no matter how automatic it might seem. At number two, Aquinas Boys Basketball. The Little Irish completed an unprecedented double, winning the state championship, thus making the first Aquinas the first team in New York to win states in both basketball and football. And at number one, well, how do you beat that? The Rush Henrietta Girls Indoor Track and Field Team won sectionals behind Lene Tava Thomas and Sammy Watson, two athletes who won four individual state crowns between them and rank among the best in the country at what they do. Which brings us to our Coriglio's Pizza Team of the Week. The Coriglio's Pizza Team of the Week is brought to you by our friends at Coriglio's Pizza. With five convenient locations throughout Rochester, Coriglio's Pizza, a proud supporter of high school athletics. We head now to Batavia where the early risers of the high school hockey crowd won a Section 5 title. Dave Yates has that story. When it comes to Batavia Notre Dame, bigger does not necessarily mean better. They are the smallest school in the state with a hockey program, which means if you go to the school there, there's a pretty good chance you not only know a hockey player, you are one. You know, there's 94 boys that go to Notre Dame's high school. 23 of them are on the hockey team. So, uh, yeah, we get plenty of support uh, from, from the school. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to make this an experience for the kids every year. We only have like 130 people at our school. So, like, at school, it's the one big family. and. When you come to the Batavia Notre Dame game, it's their student sections almost more than our entire school, so it shows that we're a real small school, but we all like come together and support hockey. You know, it's taken some time. Uh, when I started eight years ago, we had 13 players, um, and we went you know two and 22, and every year we've added a few players and, and, and got a little better. So, um, you know, this year, uh, you know, we're hoping to be uh, right there at the end. You know. If the start of the season is any indication, they will be. Notre Dame won their first 10 games and carry three of the top four scorers in Section 5 on the roster. Getting out of the gate quickly was something a lot of people on this team could see coming. From the first day of practice, you could tell this team is, you know, we gel so good and we always know, you know, where each other's going to be, how each other plays, and I think that helps out on the ice and how we, you know, got off to a good start. Um, there wasn't any getting used to anyone and getting used to the way people play. We all really knew each other, we played with each other growing up, so it kind of helps out. We didn't really know how we were going to start, but then once we started rolling, we started getting more confidence, and I think as we got midway in the season, that it started going down a little bit because we were getting too cocky, but now we're back up and we want to just go straight ahead. If you want to play hockey for Batavia Notre Dame, you better be prepared to set your alarm clock early. The Fighting Irish take the ice at 6 o'clock every morning and have since the program began. They're one of the only teams in the country to practice before the crack of dawn. Uh, but it's really become part of our identity. Uh, a lot of these kids 
are, are traveling 35, 40 miles in the morning to get here. So, you know, like our goaltender sets his alarm for 4.45 every morning. Um, but you know what, after the first, you know, four or five practices, it's, you know, it becomes a no-brainer. And I tell kids all the time, you know, we're doing more on the ice, uh, you know, while other kids are, are hitting the snooze button for the third time. It's a lot easier to get up for hockey practice in the morning than it is for school. So, and after hockey practice, you're awake and alert for school, so it's real nice. But hockey, you know, you got to get up and you got to do the thing you love. You signed up for it, and, you know, if you made that commitment, so you got to get up and do it, and I love it. I, it wakes me up in the morning and, you know, ready for the day. Coach Staley also credits the early wake-up time with a significant improvement in the team's grade point average during the hockey season. Success on the ice and in the classroom. Sounds like a winning combination. For the Vision High School Sports Beat, I'm Dave Yates. When we return, a Brighton bowler and the gift of life. And later, Kim Burnson joins us with our Wegmans Making the Grade nominee. When the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. This is a special edition of the Vision High School Sports Beat as we look back at some of our favorite, most significant stories from the winter sports season. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our honor roll of high school athletes, which is brought to you by Injury Free Coalition for Kids. Driving's a lot like the game of baseball. It's the one who gets home safely that counts. Please remember to always wear your seatbelt and to focus only on driving when behind the wheel of a car. This message courtesy of the Allstate Foundation and Injury Free Coalition for Kids Smart Teen Driving Program. Here's our honor roll of high school athletes for the season just completed. Number three, Anthony Lamb of the Greece Athena boys basketball team. Lamb led the Trojans to a 19-1 regular season record and is a sure bet to repeat his Player of the Year honors when the AGR teams come out. Lamb is headed to the University of Vermont next year. And number two, Noah Stevens of Brighton Swimming. Stevens won two state swim championships in the breaststroke and the butterfly. Noah is headed to Duke. And at number one, the Diakama Hollises. Yanni a Jr. at Hilton won his fourth straight state wrestling title at 138 pounds this year and was joined in the winner's circle by his younger brother Greg, an eighth grader who won the 99 pound weight class for the states in his very first season. And now World Gym Rochester and World Gym Greece present our Athlete of the Week. World Gym Rochester and World Gym Greece are proud sponsors of high school athletics. Memberships start as low as a dollar down, ten dollars a month. For more details, go to worldgymrochester.com and worldgymgreece.com. There was a time not that long ago when Cam Hurwitz only had to worry about his bowling average, which was among the best in Rochester. That is no longer the case. You might remember Cameron Hurwitz. We did a sports beat story with him last year. Little guy with a passion for his sport, an aspiring young seventh grade bowler whose dream it was to become a pro someday. Cameron still has that dream. But there's a lot more on his plate right now. Last February, Cameron was diagnosed with a plastic anemia. It's a bone marrow disease that prevents the production of healthy blood cells. It is life-threatening. Hurwitz undergoes weekly blood transfusions. He tires easy. Well, at first, I was pretty upset and just kind of depressed about it. But now it's just kind of become part of my life, so that's just what I do. And you have to stay optimistic, right? Yeah. Okay, how does, uh, how does bowling help? I know it does. How, how, does, how does this community help? Well, this is pretty much my family right here, so every time I come, I just, everything is just, feels normal again. Cameron can no longer attend school for fear of infection. He keeps up with his studies with the use of a robot in the classroom every day. And he bowls. Wearing a face mask, Hurwitz is averaging 212 as an eighth grader on the Brighton High School varsity. His biggest fan, is Reese Hurwitz, a junior on the same team who carries a 227 average, which is tops in the section. But for Reese, bowling takes a back seat to being Cameron's big brother. He's, he's my best friend and I just gotta look out for him. I mean, we're all here for him and he's, he's living life normally now, rather than, you know, being all depressed and thinking that nothing's gonna be good for him anymore. 
uh, and he and he has bowling, and bowling has kept him positive, and he knows that he can come here, and he feels normal. He doesn't feel sick when he's here because it's something he can actually do. Um, it's not a sport where he's at risk of getting hurt, so therefore he he can do it, um, and and he's doing well, and he's always positive. He's upbeat when he's here. Clover Lane's hosted a well-attended fundraiser. Cameron bowled in the Nationals this summer, met his hero Norm Duke, and appeared on the cover of Bowler's Journal. The Make-A-Wish Foundation helped provide Hurwitz with a bowling ball press where he spends considerable time. The local bowling community has become a base of support and his second family. And since we spend so much time here, um, it really is it really is a big family, um, not just here at Clover Lanes, but the, the whole bowling, Rochester bowling community and beyond in other areas. Um, we've met so many people and um, it, it really is a nice feeling to come in here and just be able to cry with your friends, laugh, um, watch your sons do what they love and it makes it better in some way. Cameron will undergo a bone marrow transplant later this month, just after Christmas. Following the surgery, He'll be in quarantine for nine months. But he left Clover Lanes, which will be demolished by the time he returns to active duty in style. <laughs> Rolling his first 300 game last week. You, you looking forward to, to just plowing through all of this and getting back next year? Yeah, I am. Although it's going to be like a tough, a pretty tough path, I'm excited to get back to normal. Up next, Kim with our Make of the Grade nominee before unveiling Jeff Barron's salute to the season in our Dunkin' Donuts All Sports High School Games of the Season segment when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back and thanks for watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for Making the Grade, brought to you by Wegmans. Wegmans is a proud supporter of Making the Grade, which highlights the accomplishments of Section 5 student athletes on and off the playing field. We now take a look back at some of our Making the Grade honorees for the winter season. We start with Canandaigua junior Tanner Cooper, an AP student who plays football and is an all-county shortstop for the baseball team. Another honoree, Emma Moulton of Brockport, was recognized for her athletics and volunteer work with community events like the Special Olympics. Bishop Kearney Sr. Sean Carroll was honored for ranking third in his class while balancing baseball and showing off his musical talents with his high school's folk group. Deirdre Kelly, an All-American lacrosse goalie at Mercy, displayed her leadership by raising money for cancer research through the Bald for Bucks campaign. Meanwhile, Jake Purcell, a captain of McQuaid's varsity basketball team, was honored for his leadership on the court and over 100 hours of community service. Lastly, Webster Thomas Sr. Emma Schaefer combines cheerleading with giving back through her work with Cheer for Charity and the Battle of the Mats. We'd like to say thank you to all of our student athletes who are honored for making the grade. If you have a student in mind for our Making the Grade segment, we want your nominations. You can send them in to info at classywolf.com. Now here's Bill with the Sylvan Learning Section 5 calendar. Our Section 5 calendar is brought to you by Sylvan Learning, delivering results in reading, math, writing, study skills, SAT and ACT prep, and more. Four area locations, call 385-9480. Here's what's happening this week in our Sylvan Learning Section 5 calendar. The local baseball and softball seasons begin with a couple of optimistic challenges to the weather contests. The Greece Olympia baseball team begins a series of games against city schools hosting Franklin at 1 o'clock. Batavia scheduled the first two local softball games Tuesday at Albion at 4.30 and then against Pembroke at home Wednesday at 4.30. It still figures it'd be more like lacrosse weather, however. There's a good girls game Thursday with Fairport playing at Mercy, 4.30 start. And then under the lights on Thursday, Aquinas plays Adirondacoy. It's a boys game at 7.15. That's our Sylvan Learning Section 5 calendar for the weekend. Our salute to the season in our Dunkin' Donuts All Sport High School Game of the Week segment when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues.
Sign Impressions is more than just signs. It's a total graphics company. Embroidery, screen printing, team apparel, t-shirts, jackets, hats, and of course, banners and signs. Visit signimpressions.com, call us at 723-0420 to order your team or corporate apparel. Welcome back to this special edition of the Vision High School Sports Beat. We're looking back at the winter sports season. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our Dunkin' Donuts All Sport High School Game of the Week. The bigger the burrito, the bigger the fun. Dunkin's new Grande Burrito, a breakfast burrito packed with big Southwest flavor. Go Grande with veggie or sausage today. America runs on Dunkin'. We do this three times every year. Search through the video shot over the course of a high school sports season to come up with a piece that represents the best of what we see and do here at the Sports Beat. Jeff Barron puts it together. It is our Dunkin' Donuts All Sport High School Games of the Season. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. That's what we did. The more you keep it close and we're there at the end, then we just tighten up our day a little bit and we take this on the road. I never said this was going to be easy. You understand how hard we're going to have to play if you want to win this. Remember, this is just a late season test to see where we are. And I'll tell you right now, in the first half, I like what I see. But I think there's room for growth. I think we can take our game to another level. But they're, they're going to take their game to another level. So we have to answer. All right? Answer with energy. Answer with heart. Answer together.